welcome back to the Football Flynn Show. Today, uh, this is a special episode. This is a very special St. Patrick's Day episode. It's uh, on a famous Celt, uh, Patsy Gallagher. So this is where it all started in the Hills of Golan with Millie, uh, William and Margaret. And we'll get into that now. Out in Golan where I was born, hunger and hardship were the norm. In a two-room cottage with an earthen floor, thatched roof and sagging half door, eight kids huddled round an open turf fire, trying to dry their wet attire out in Golan. The bloody roof, it always leaked, the bloody walls with soot were streaked, no running water or electric light, get space for sleep was a bloody fight with three big lads in a small hard bed trying to sleep toes to heads out and going. That was a few verses of Golan in the Hungry Thirties written by Michael Gallagher. This is the Golan pad, it, it takes you into Mulford, but that, the poem just shows you how times were hard on people in Golan and everywhere else. But this is the last verse, there's 14 verses in it. To the kids who survived those hungry times, my inspiration to pen these few lines. When you get to the pearly gates and St Peter is there with his scales and weights, He'll nod you to all with a knowing grid and say you're from Golan, you can go straight in. But if, even if you were go, to go down below, the difference you'd hardly even know from bo Bloody Golan in the Hungry Thirties, written by Michael Gallagher. He was a relation of Patsy's. Now we'll move on to St. Bridget's Church. It's near Golan now. It's always raining here in Donegal, it's pouring the rain down. But anyways, we're here at St. Uh, 
Bridget's Church in Golan. Uh, St Bridget's Church was built in 1870 to replace Mass Rock at Bunlin, despite the third arrow of Leitrim's refusal to permit the building of a church at Bunlin on the site of the Sca- Scallon. He did grant the site at Golan for the church. He also gave advice to the priest at that time in relation to the building work, but whether this was welcome or not, it is not known. But yeah, the, pre- uh, the third arrow of Lord Leitrim, he didn't want the church uh, to be over that way around here so at the mass rock at Bunlin so he decided to put it he wanted it to, to be here but also there's a story going of um, William and Margaret Gallagher um, when they moved into the workhouse in Mulford the stone of their walls and their house um, was used to build the wall or the wall inside the bathroom the wall outside of the inside but um, we don't know if that's true or not but we'll move on to the workhouse now. Now we're at the Milford workhouse or so this is the Mil- Milford workhouse cemetery it was all around here uh, it was very big workhouse but uh, this cemetery contains the remains of many unidentified people who died between 1845 and 1922 and with the and with the support of this local community, this serves as a memorial to all interred here. May they rest in peace. But that, yeah, this is where it all happened. Uh, we're here because when William and Margaret moved into the workhouse from Golan, uh, Ma- Margaret had Patsy, and Patsy uh, was born in the workhouse. But many records and people say that he wasn't born in the workhouse, he was born in Ramelton, but it shows that he was actually born in the workhouse, and then he moved to Ramelton when he was um, a couple of years old. But probably the hardest part for them, uh, as uh, for Margaret and William and the kids, was that the families were split up into sections. Women, men, children, uh, so they're all split up and so they would never get to see each other maybe only for a couple of hours in a week uh, they'd have to do different jobs like the women had to do cooking and look after the old and sick uh, the men would be put to breaking stones and or digging potatoes and the elderly and those that went, weren't too sick were expected to spin weave and um or men clothes so uh, and but then the older children not the younger ones the older children would be would sometimes be hired to local farmers to work in the fields so the times in the workhouse weren't tough uh, were the tough they were toughest because you'd have to work to get the food and get to everything you needed to survive but as it tells it's hard for everybody in the workhouse and everybody that was in the workhouse and uh, lived poor but now uh, we'll move over to the studio. Hello, and we're back at the studio now. We're back um, at the HQ. Uh, so where we, we're going to pick up from where we left off, at the workhouse, and that was where um, Patsy was born in the workhouse in Milford. Uh, but now they moved to Ramelton. They moved to Ramelton. And uh, some people claim, some people say that he's from our mountain, but I don't think he is. But um, so now we'll be uh, now um by the t- so. Then after that, after a while in Ramelton, they went to Scotland. By the time William and Margaret decided to move to Scotland, Clyde by Gla- Clyde Bank Glasgow, they had seven kids, four boys and three girls. When they moved, Patsy was three years old. Um. Six years before uh, Celtic FC was formed, Celtic Football Club. And that was just six years before Patsy was born. Uh, so we'll get into Patsy facts now. Patsy, um, Patsy, Gall- Patsy Gallagher, um, so their original name as um, William and Margaret and all Gallagher's, their original name was Gallagher. But when the doorman, so there was a doorman, so the, uh, the Gallagher's couldn't read or write. So when the doorman then went to put a, a nameplate on their door, um, he spent, he spelt it with a C-H, uh, C with a C uh, instead of a G. Uh, but, uh, but then also, yes, it's a more Scottish name, but then they decided to keep it when they heard about it and all because they, cause they couldn't read or write. But... It would have been easier to get a job because uh, the way they were 
kind of Scottish and they weren't in immigrants. People thought they were Scottish, not immigrants. But so it might be an easier job to get. Uh, easier. There might be a load of jobs to get because you're Scottish. You're not immigrants. Um, Patsy. Moving on to Patsy Gallagher's um. Patsy Gallagher's record. Patsy Gallagher approximately scored one hundred ninety go. Uh, uh, approximately scored around one hundred ninety two hundred goals in four hundred and sixty four games. One of the best goals he scored was against Dundee United in a Scottish Cup final. Uh, so there was a wee comic piece on it from the Donegal Sports Up, and it was five men he's beaten. He's inside the five yard line. The keeper's coming out. Patsy stumbled. No, it's incredible. He somersaulted into the goal with his feet. So he grabbed the ball with his feet and somersaulted over the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper came out. It was the equaliser. Um, Celtic won the final eventually after South, uh, Patsy's goal. But unfortunately uh, and sadly, it was Patsy's last cup final for Celtic. Just 14 months later, on July 1926, the club retired him after 15 years. Because uh, he got a wee small injury and he wasn't he, he had to come off. So they just retired him. But he had a lot of jobs then. Um, Patsy Gallagher's story, or um, as he was growing up and when he was with Celtic and all, is covered in many different books, articles, websites, um, one being The Mighty Adam, which I actually got, and it's on its way from Amazon. I bought it the last day, so it's on the way from Amazon. Uh, I bought it on Amazon because I thought it may, may be a great book to read. Um, then, so... Like it's the same. Uh, the rich when Pat's so then after that Patsy died. Uh, June fifteenth, nineteen fifty three. Sad. It was very sad. But then, uh, when Patsy died in his but uh, so when Patsy died, he had a bar during his jo- like when he got retired from Celtic and all. He had a bar, and so uh, in his bar when P- uh, when. People were clearing out the bar. Uh, they found lots of IOUs. IOUs are basically like, uh, he, so uh, from customers that owed him money. So customers in the shop owed Patsy money. Uh, but then he, Patsy knew how hard it was for him, um, when he was smaller and grown up and it was tough times. So he just didn't go after the money. He didn't bother look, go looking for the money. He just said, ah, it sure it won't do them any bother. It's only a wee bit of money. And he just left them because he knew how times were tough. And he knew that like people always, um, pe- all every person has it hard. Uh, so then... So they, he couldn't go looking for the money, and that kind of tells you what man he was. He was actually a nice man that just would always just be nice in the way he was like that. That's very, very, it's just very. I don't know. It's just very nice. I suppose like maybe if that was another person, hey, go chase them down. We've got the money. Give me that money back. It's kind of like that. Um, but I made a wee Patsy Gallagher FIFA card, a St. Patrick's Day FIFA card kind of background with a hundred a uh, hundred rating, a uh, hundred overall rating, right forward playing for Celtic, Irish, five star skill moves, five star weak foot, ninety nine pace, ninety nine shooting, ninety nine passing, ninety nine dribbling, ninety nine defending, and ninety nine physical. That was, I created a fun wee Patsy Gallagher um FIFA card for uh, just for like St Patrick's Day and his birthday, but moving on now to the family tree, the Gallagher family tree. So William and Margaret Gallagher came from farms in Slamahan and Golan. It uh, had four boys and three girls. One of them is Patsy Gallagher. It uh, Patsy Gallagher married Mary Josephine Dunnigan. And then Patsy and Mary had five sons and one daughter. The first son was Tommy. He played for Dundee. Um, he went on to be a sports journalist. And then they also had William. He played for Celtic. But uh, Tommy played for Dundee in 
uh, the game in April 1948, which might have relegated Celtic. Not only was Patsy obviously was watching in the stands, um, his brother Willie William, who played for Celtic, was actually playing for Celtic in that game uh, that day. Although in the end, Celtic just scraped a three-two win. Just scraped it. They just got it in the end. Um, they also had so um. And from com- covering it now, Tommy, yeah, I said he was done Dean. He went on to be a sports journalist. And then he had a son, um, Brian Gallagher. And then uh, Tommy's granddaughter is Amy Gallagher, who plays for Hips. And then Amy Gallagher's cousin is Sean Gallagher, who played for Dundee. Um, and t- I don't think he's playing anymore. But then just they had Justin, then Bernard. Bernard's son was Kevin Gallagher. Then they had William, who played for Celtic. Then they had uh, Jack. And then they had Bridget, Bridget who then had um, as a son John Divers Sr. And then uh, John Divers Sr.'s son, John Divers uh, Jr. Uh, John Divers Sr. scored 42 goals for Celtic and... John Divers Jr. scored 110 goals and he went on to be a teacher. Um, so that kind of, so uh, Bernard as well, Kevin, uh, Bernard and then going down, to, uh, Bernard's son was Kevin Gallagher and uh, here's a wee bit about Kevin Gallagher, about Kevin Gallagher. Kevin Gallagher played for Newcastle. Newcastle fans loved him as a player. He played for Blackburn and won the Premier League in the 1994-95 season with Kenny Douglas as manager and with Alan Shear and Chris Sutton. Uh, there were two attackers in the team. He played with Dundee United and nearly ruined the centenary year for Celtic in 1988. Uh, scoring one early goal, but it was cancelled out by two goals. He scored 114 goals and 482 appearances in all his career. Uh, so Kevin Gallagher was a great player in his time. But I think we'll move over to the work, uh, back to the workhouse now, and we'll finish off at the workhouse. So hopefully you enjoyed this wee piece now. So we're moving over to the workhouse. Goodbye. This is the end of the show, but hopefully you enjoyed it. But th- we did this because this is Patsy Gallagher. This is when he was born today, and this is the place. F- it memory for all the people in the workhouse but this was Patsy Gallagher's birthday one of the main reasons was I was doing a project with Sparky Mark he was all he was on the show before and most of it was most of it was on Patsy Gallagher so uh, I decided then that uh, we'll do a show on him as well for his birthday but uh, hopefully you enjoyed the last couple of episodes there's you know what, there's no plaque here or anything for Patsy So I'm just going to hang this Celtic scarf up here for him. And I'll leave it at that. So hopefully you enjoyed the episode. This is the Patsy Gallagher special and goodbye.